ABC 13 News anchor Mark Spain was out on Timberlake Road as well. He took these pictures of the damage last evening. He says he also spoke with someone who was inside the Burger King when the winds and the possible tornado hit. Well, that's my car. That's your truck, yeah, your SUV. Right. I think it probably hit the medical center and came this way. Right. And you can see that there's some air conditioning units back there that were probably thrown off the roof over there. But this is all the, the damage here. Okay. So, you got insurance? Uh, just liability. It's an old car. And you're alive. Yeah, I'm alive. That's the best thing. Yeah. City wants you to know a few things. At this hour, they are asking you to stay off the roads due to the hazardous conditions and to allow police, fire, and public works to respond to problem areas throughout the city. There are downed trees throughout the city, and the city says the trees cannot be moved until AEP deactivates any live electrical wires. Assume all downed power lines are energized. Do not drive around barricades. Also, the city is asking you not to call 911 unless you have an emergency. AC 13's Annie Anderson is now live in the Boonesboro area of Lynchburg, Lynchburg, where there's a significant amount of damage out there, Annie. There is. You can see that crews here are cleaning up some of the down trees. Now, these are volunteers, I'm told, from EC Glass High School. This is the soccer team and the lacrosse team. They don't live in this area, but they heard about the damage and came out here to help. Now, I am going to show you, bear with me while I walk out to this backyard. I want to show you guys some of the damage. You can see just right there, starting to, if I point, you can see there are some trees down. I'm going to walk down here and show you guys these trees. Now, this is the case all over this neighborhood. I'm here on Peakland uh, Park, and this is some of the damage. Now, the crews have already been here in this backyard. There is still somebody here sweeping up a lot of the debris, but you can see that giant tree, and they actually had a tree go through the pool, too. But that tree right there took down quite a few power lines, and if you go, it also landed on this house. I'm gonna walk over here, show you guys how big this tree is. Ooh, I got caught on something. Okay, now I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna use my hand as reference, but look how big this tree is. There's my hand and the tree just goes on and on. Actually, I can't reach it, so. But if we look at this roof, I'm gonna zoom in. You can see the tree landed on the roof of this house. Now some good news though, nobody was hurt in this area at least that I've talked to neighbors. The family who lives in this house tells me they were in that back room when the storm started, so they heard it all happen, but the tree did not hit their house. Oh. I'm not sure if you guys are still with me, but I, am, I came unplugged, so I am gonna let you guys see this. So you can see the tree stopped just short of their house. And I'm going to send it back to you guys now to look at some of the damage elsewhere in this area. Today is the first day of the cleanup process here in Amherst County. And for residents of this tight-knit community, what they're seeing is absolutely devastating. I heard this noise that sounded like a train coming. It was, it was just really a foreboding noise, like doom. That was the moment Tefna Richardson knew she was in trouble. She grabbed her dogs, crouched in the corner, and prayed she would survive the storm. And at that time, I started just screaming out, just praying. Trees toppled down around Richardson's home, but she and her dogs walked away unharmed due to what she calls the grace of God. I just started screaming, hallelujah, hallelujah. I was screaming it to the top of my lungs. I was like, praise you, Father, because... I knew I had missed death. I knew that. Now for some, all that's left behind is destruction and debris, especially along Route 130 in Elon, where the storm hit the hardest. We do ask that if no one lives up in this area, please do not come here and just ride through the area just to see what's happening. Uh, we've got a lot of people working in the area, but also out of respect for um, the citizens that lost you know, everything down at, you know, last night. It's a scene that's hard to imagine, and one that most hopefully will never have to. I have never seen, I'm here from five years in this area, and before that I was in the Appomattox area, so I haven't seen this kind of damage before. Yeah, Thanks okay. God, lives are saved, and uh, houses we can make it again, but <laughs> lives are saved, that's more than that. All officials say 25 to 20 homes were either a complete loss or severely damaged. Total of six people taken to the hospital, all 
with non-life-threatening injuries. We spoke with homeowner David Childress. His home was demolished, flattened here in this neighborhood. He says his wife and son were inside when that tornado struck. She said that um, she actually saw the house lifting up. She was on the main floor and she saw the wall coming in and the wall actually hit her. Um, and then she hollered out for our oldest son, Bryson, and she actually found him that the storm had actually thrown him out into the yard. And so uh, he was unconscious. And And I'm told by the sheriff here that that happened in a matter of 10 minutes. Coming one day with these. Uh, just hit like out of nowhere. Went from normal rain to not being able to see out the window, maybe five feet. Then I heard trees fall down, and three minutes later, it was all over. This storm tore through this neighborhood on Brooklawn Drive in Campbell County. We took the five steps to the door, and by then the glass was breaking and stuff was flying. I don't know, it's kind of like flight or fright. You just got down and then, you know, because they didn't want to be standing up if the roof came down. And this is what they walked outside to, their neighborhood in shambles. It's a lot of roof damage, a lot of trees, um, windows broken. More than half the windows are broken and shattered on the inside, so the bunch of glass came. Last night a piece of glass hit me just below the eye. It's just overwhelming. It's scary and, you know, it could have been a lot worse. Lynette Andrews says her family spent the entire morning picking up the pieces. All the cars are totaled and it's just, it's a lot to deal with. <laughs> But with the help of neighbors, everyone is getting back on their feet. People have been amazing. I mean, look at that. It was a cleaning day for most. There was brush all the way up to the house there. We could barely get into the doors. Frank Whitehouse was home when the storm came through his neighborhood. Before we figured out it was time to head to the basement, maybe two minutes after the warning, three minutes, the tornado came over. And while his yard is a mess, the storm spared his house. I, I'm really shocked. I, you know, as, as much damage as there is, um, I think, well, fortunately, we got lucky. But others weren't. This family lost their roof. All of a sudden, the wind came down, like, really, really hard, and um, the windows were, like, pitch white. White House says after seeing all the damage at other homes, he didn't mind cleaning his yard. But even so, he was happy to see student athletes from EC Glass High School helping out. The community, they came out to watch us play our football games, so we might as well come out and help the community, help them get better, you know. I tell you, the Glass guys have been super because they've, they've helped us enormously getting this cleaned up. I, I, I wouldn't even think it, what would have happened. This would have been weeks and weeks and weeks. Trouble sight. When you're coming back and you see, you looked where your house was. And it's not there. David Childress came back to a demolished house and found his wife and son in distress. She said that um, she actually saw the house lifting up. She was on the main floor and she saw the wall coming in and the wall actually hit her. And then she hollered out for our oldest son Bryson and she actually found him that the storm had actually thrown him out into the yard. And so uh, he was unconscious. His family, one of many here to experience devastation. So that's where it was? Yes. And that's where it is now? Correct. So it's upside down right now? Yep. Luckily, no one was hurt. To our home, the brick off this side and up at attic, you can see a hole on the other side. We're very fortunate to be alive. A feeling so many here share. The house we can replace, but our family we can't. Tell you what, they really do not want people coming by and gawking at this because they've got a lot of work to do. We spoke with one homeowner over here who says that he was trapped inside his home for about an hour. Can you imagine that? His roof was blown off and the sides of the walls came crashing in on him. Gosh, this guy got lucky. His neighbor came over and helped him get out. That uh, door right there come in on me and I didn't realize until later on that the roof was gone. Till I looked up, and like I said, that boy come over and help me get, help me get, get me out of there. He managed to get upstairs where his neighbor put a ladder and then brought him to safety. And luckily, 
He only had a few minor cuts and scrapes. It's been two days since that tornado touched down and still you can see all the damage all around. There was a home that was once sitting right over there and now you can just see it's scattered. There's a bed here, there's a window, there's tons of materials from the home that once stood here. But also down this way, you can see the path the tornado took. It really curved over to the left here and you can just see some of the devastation from those homes that were in the path of the tornado. So many of them rebuilding right now. There's construction crews, there's power line crews out there trying to help these communities. I spoke with some neighbors out there and they tell me what it was like when the tornado hit Sunday night. We hear screaming, I mean, just screaming, screaming, and we look over there and there's nothing of their house but a pile of rubble. Just seen that gone and I thought about all those kids that he has and it was just terrible. It was just a, just a weird feeling. Ron was sleeping when the tornado roared through and took out the home across from hers. So oh, this was a mobile home. Yes, the tornado actually ripped the mobile home off of the hitch. She says the car parked out front stopped the debris from hitting her home. So would you say that car saved your life? Definitely, yes, yes. that car was definitely a lifesaver. Members from Thomas Road Baptist Church, Red Cross and countless other volunteers are here to help. We are looking at what used to be my business. Um, obviously, the, the storm that came through Sunday just annihilated it. Only a shell is left of the floor show carpet store on Timberlake Road. We moved into this building in 1979. I took it over for good about four years ago. It's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. Several businesses lining the street are left with little to nothing after Sunday's severe storm. And I kept my fingers crossed, hoping there wouldn't be any damage in my building, but I didn't get lucky. Wayne Sloop works next door. It's just uh, an absolute mess. I have to be closed all this week and uh, I hope, uh, according to the landlord, I might be able to get in by next week. The big key is now is, you know, where do we go? And that's the that's the unknown at this point. Both business owners say they're hopeful they will be able to get back to business soon. The support we've gotten from the neighbors, uh, again, other flooring stores, just other businesses, people in the community in general, customers, has been absolutely, uh, I, I mean, I, overwhelming. It's it's that. It's when you just realize what community is all about. Kyle Falwell took me up in a plane so we could see the damage from above. Falwell's the owner of Bon Air Brokerage, and he pointed out some of the damage he saw from the air. And we could see trees down, houses gone. We went over Timberlake Road, Boonesboro, and then over to Elon. And that's where he says it took his breath away. I was on the ground uh, for the one couple years ago that touched down February out in Evergreen. We were out there trying to locate survivors and stuff like that. So. Having two so close in such close proximity to home kind of opens your eyes a little bit. He told me that seeing the debris trail from the air and how much damage there was was really surprising. He really didn't think the footprint was going to be that big. And he says seeing all of that damage was hard to take.